Hello everybody, my name is Raven Dragoon and I'm here to review a replay by one Rabbi Crypto, who I believe on the Reddit was MC London. Cool. He's playing Scarath Mage. Um, Scarath Mage is an interesting hero to play as support. Uh, I used to play a lot of him mid. I kind of did the same thing you did. Um, before I really devoted a lot of this summer to playing Dota and like, getting good, um, I used to play mid, basically, and I would play heroes like Skyrath, uh, or Tinker, or somebody else, and I would play them mid and basically just wait for my opponents to walk out of position. Um, and this is actually pretty easy to win games with. Like, you, you play Skyrath, you get, like, a couple levels and your ultimate, and it's pretty disgusting because you can just concussive shot somebody... Silence them, kill them. They die pretty fast, so you can snowball off of early kills like this. So, that's not what you're doing this game. You you started playing support, which is the same thing I did. I said, okay, I'm 3.3k. To get better at Dota, I think I need to understand Dota, so I'm going to start playing exclusively for 5 position. Um, and like you, I dropped really hard uh, when I started doing this. I dropped to like 2.5k. Uh, and then I, I basically said, fuck it, I'm going to get good, and I'm going to learned how to play support properly. So I climbed all the way back up to 4K playing uh, 4 and 5 position. And I learned a lot. Okay, so Skyrath is not a hero I generally play 5 position, but I'll help you in the ways that I can. Uh, when I play 5 position, I generally don't like to get a win lace. Even if I'm on a hero that likes to have a win lace, like, a great example of this is, like, Pugna. If you're doing five position, you you might want to have a win lace if you're if you're mid. You can it means you can skip boots for like the first fifteen minutes because he's got such high movement speed at the start. But I just I don't generally feel like you need it. You want to have more regen. The biggest problem that people have is not bringing enough regen to lane. You have two clarities, which is pretty good, but you only have one set of tangos. You have zero armor, which means that if you try to trade with somebody, you're gonna suffer pretty hard. All right, let's see how you play this. So. Uh, you ping the ogre you have death pulse crush and poison touch this is actually a pretty good level 1 lineup I like that you're going on the uh, ogre and not the life stealer because you think the life stealer might have rage but he did not skill it because he didn't hold on to his skill point so this guy theoretically should die you just need to get the crush off which might not be possible yeah that's fine it's just a positioning thing. But now you've gone too far. You can't ever eat tower when you're playing Skyrath. Because you have zero armor. You have zero physical resistance. And this thing does like, especially tier 2s, 152 damage a shot. Which means 3 shots and you're dead. Plus a couple other right clicks. Alright, I like that this Dazzle will cancel that guy's TP. For his cancel to self. Alright. So a failed rune contest, I've seen enough of them, it's fine. I like the fact that you started uh, with a sentry. I don't know if you're thinking about going up against Weaver, but generally when I play support, I find that uh, enemy supports will very frequently ward right in front of my fucking face, uh, or right in front of my tower, and it's one of the easiest dewards of my life. All the time. I very frequently do this. Now I'm guessing it's a necro mid. This, I personally think, is a waste. You're doing about uh, maybe 70, 80 damage a shot, minus, not counting reductions. And it's taking you 70 mana. Admittedly, you have two clarities, but I feel like this is just not that efficient. I generally like to use a few of my arcane bolts early, and then hang on to most of my mana until level 3 when they hurt harder. You're also soaking XP from your mid necro, and mid necro is kind of weak early, and he wants to get these early levels. You've taken, like, five creeps of experience from him. I would much rather that you just be top, trying to kill this, uh, or trying to kill this weaver. Right? You're not accomplishing much here. Um, uh, and it is important to remember that while you don't have much in the way of armor, that doesn't mean you can't trade. You could have bought um, a salve instead of the windlace, and this would mean that you're very likely not going to have to go back to base. 
Um, and it means you can trade more freely with people. For instance, Weaver. Uh, Weaver has a pro ring, so he's a bit beefier than normal, but ordinarily when I play against him, if he, he's level 1 and I'm level 1, I love trading against a Weaver. You wait until he shiku uh, shikuchis and tries to damage you, and that way he can't dodge your arcane bolts or whatever other spell you throw at him. <coughs> Excuse me. It's very, very polleny here where I live. I would prefer that you are tri against this Weaver, because if you're tri against him, you can uh, harass, harass the Weaver while Dazzle pulls, or the other way around. Um, Dazzle needs regen. This is a classic 2k starting items, where you have no Gauntlets of Strength, and I wonder, why is all my health gone? Um, but right now, you're just... You're not accomplishing anything mid in the same way as if you were a roamer like Bounty Hunter who can really punish a mid Storm Spirit. Um, I would be more okay with you rotating mid if your mid weren't Necro. Necro's pretty weak early. He just doesn't have any slows. His whole purpose is to just exist while allies around him disable people. And now you're standing here waiting for the two minute rune. I really think this is a waste. You don't even know if this is gonna spawn here. You're also just regening mana and just letting your mid Necro get experience. But you've already fucked him over a little bit, so it doesn't really matter. This is one thing I see a lot of uh, 2k supports do, where they just soak XP without realizing what they're doing. Ultimately, it matters more that Necro gets levels than that you two split it evenly. And you've used one of your clarities and half of your remaining mana to do, like, 300 damage to the Storm Spirit and burn through some of his regen, but he had tangos and a shared tango. You could have checked that at the beginning and realized that you weren't going to win this war. Alright, I think you should grab this and go back mid now, because a double damage changes things. Because Skyrath may have crappy armor, but he still trades excellently when he has a fucking DD on. You should concussive shot and then just whack this bitch. I think that could have been a kill. Oh, he fogged you just at the last second. Yeah. See, I like that you came here with the double damage, but now you're out of mana because you used all of your mana previously to try and do damage. Okay. And you, the enemy team's getting a lot of kills. The Weaver should not be getting kills. Top. Dazzle should have Shallow Grave if he's having such a hard time. I think if you'd been pulling here while Dazzle harassed, or the other way around, Weaver would be like, uh, two at most, maybe three. You also might, uh, consider getting Silence level three to try and deal with the Weaver. You can definitely kill him with that. Alright, I like that you're pulling here. But now Weaver's high level. So he's gonna have a really easy time contesting the pull. If he wants to, he's going to walk over here and absorb all the XP. You're also not getting any of this XP. You could be denying these creeps and getting, like, a bit of XP out of them. This is also the risk of pulling at the same time you stack. The 53 pull is good um, for denying a wave. It's not so good for getting you experience. It's a trade-off that you have to consider. And that one missed by, like, 10 seconds. It's fine. It looks like dual lanes bottom. I'm just not a fan of dual lanes that much. I feel like uh, in the current meta, you'd rather let Slardar get s kind of screwed over and in return screw over the Weaver. Slardar is very okay with not much. Weaver is not. Now this Weaver is just kind of running you guys over top. He's pulling even with the Slark, which shouldn't happen. Now you're coming back mid. He's not 6 yet, so you don't need the silence to kill him, but you need to have a mid who's not necro. Or you're... I guess you could get this. But now you're out of mana. Right? Now you're gonna eat power shots. If you hadn't wasted so much mana earlier, you could hit him with a arcane bolt now. Maybe you've killed him before taking a ton of tower damage. Because the tower range is... I guess I can't see it. But the tower range is, I think, including you. You're under tower. Oh 
my god. Okay. You get him. That's fine, but now you have to go back to base. If you had a salve, you could pop the salve. And if you had been conserving mana earlier, you could have popped your clarities and stayed on the map. Playing the first five minutes correctly is really important on position five supports. Right now, I don't I don't really know how you're playing this. I don't know if you're I don't know if you're laner or if you're roaming. Skyrath Mage strikes me as not a good roamer because at level one you have a thirty percent slow for four seconds, which is okay, but it's a long cooldown. You can't dive at all because you have zero armor and you don't hit very hard. You hit for like forty six at level one, and you have a bad animation. So if you want to get kills at level one with Skyrath. Um, you need somebody with you to do it with. Necro is not that person. Slark might be, right? I think Sl uh, I think uh, Slardar and Dazzle could get kills with you, but you didn't coordinate with that that with them. Okay. Looks like you're going to gra grab some wards. You're going to get an arcane boots. I think. Oh, I like that you got raindrops. I mentioned this in the other two reviews I did, but raindrops are fucking great. They're excellent mana. I am totally okay with you, or any support getting raindrops casually, not just to build up and to earn. Okay. Yeah, you need you need a uh, silence to kill that guy. Better you need dust, since it's before six and he can't he can't refresh the dust off with his ult. Whoa, I'm getting texts. They did see that ward. Very frequently I will see low supports uh, do that thing where they just ward right in front of you. Very, very, very easy to kill that ward. If he if he saw it, but you know, this is low 2k, so who knows. Still though, you can um, hide behind this tree, and then place the ward, and then they can't see it. Just a minor thing that can keep you from getting dewarded. Okay, now you have silence, and that guy is 6. So it's going to be a hard kill to get through it fast, but it's still possible. Especially if you time the Ancient Seal with uh, Reaper Scythe. This is definitely possible. This is almost a game where I would consider getting more levels in Ancient Seal early, because you have a huge magic nuke in Reaper Scythe, and you have two people who you want to be silenced for as long as possible. And you also don't have other great ways to deal with them. If you had other stuns or other silences, I'd say definitely max um, your other skills first, but... Our, uh, Ancient Seal, maybe picking up one or two extra levels could be really good because a five second silence is very different from a three second silence. Especially versus somebody like Storm. Storm has a lot of ammo right now. Yeah. Alright, you get him. Good shit. Um, it's difficult to do this, and this is like a really high level thing, but try and, try and make it so that as soon as you show up, you're, you're killing somebody within 20 seconds because you were waiting for a while. I'm just glad you roamed mid once you actually could kill him rather than uh, roaming mid early and then staying in lane later. This is another example of something you need to stop, uh, silence. He's gonna rage. Nope. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you weren't gonna get that guy without uh, an ult or no mana. And I think it is correct to leave here. You're out of anything you can do. If your allies yell at you and say, oh shit, fuck you, you need to you need to help us, ignore them. Never die with somebody just to make them feel better. You were completely out of mana, it was the correct choice to leave. I do think, however, that you need a stick. Um, Weaver casts Shikuchi a lot, and Storm will be casting a lot of spells. And I think stick is pretty good here. I, I, I can think of very few games where my enemies cast so few spells that stick is bad. It's just so cheap and it will often save your life. Maybe you don't have to upgrade it into a magic wand, but I still think stick is pretty good. It's, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to not get stick, if that makes sense. Because you just find yourself a little bit short on mana all the time. Okay. Um, you need mana. You've just been kind of doing not much for the past minute, uh, since you had this fight bottom here. And you've been just relying on your infused raindrop to give you mana back, when I think the correct thing to do is actually just walk back to base, shrine here, and then get back out onto the map and go do shit again. You have silence, uh, and Storm is not snowballing. So it's totally possible to kill him again, especially with Necro, because he already has Reaper Scythe off cooldown. 
and a veil. You have two sources of crazy magic amplification. Um, and right now you're just farming to try and get your six. Admittedly, your six is important, but I think you could get levels off of killing the storm, and that would also fuck him. This is essentially the principle for plant supports. You always want to be trying to get kills primarily. And here you fucked up. Because that guy is pretty strong. Dazzle isn't really a good hero for uh, kill potential. You you might have uh, like he has a decent right click, and he has poison touch, but unless you have units on the enemy hero, it's not going to do much at all. Now this guy's going to die. If he had a TP, he could just shallow grave and then TP out, but he's probably going to die. Yeah, why is he coming back? He's just taking way too much damage here. Oh, I should not be watching him. I don't know if you placed this form, uh, but unless it was placed at night time, they can definitely see it when you place it. This is another problem I see a lot in 2k games. People just get some pretty dumb war placements. Whereas if you... Like, if it's 2k, probably they won't see it. But as soon as you start trying to climb, you will encounter players who will watch the minimap and will instantly deward you. At 4k, I still see a lot of players who just instantly sentry. I definitely do it. I start every game of support with a sentry, just for that shit. Even if I'm against zero invis heroes, I start with a sentry. Just because so frequently people just ward in my fucking face. Okay. You needed to run towards the Dazzle so he could grave you. This guy needs to TP out, but he doesn't have one. I don't know why he has these casual gauntlets. Doesn't make sense to me. And this shrine's off cooldown. Or on cooldown. He's so dead. The well, Lysel actually fucked up. He needed to open woods. And he, uh. Yeah. If he hadn't raged, he would have uh, had open wounds available. I'm gonna watch that again. Looks like you killed the uh, CM. You're in base. And you say, I'm gonna TP in and we're gonna kill this Crystal Maiden. This is good. This guy's just gonna ult him. Or I guess you don't need to. Okay, that's good. I like the TP response. Generally, when you play supports, if you die, you should not be TPing out to the field. Even if it's like early game and you want to be out there doing stuff, unless you have a specific thing in mind you want to be doing, you don't have to. Alright, you need to silence that guy and then Reaper Scythe right now. I guess you get him. If, if he had like 50 more health, he would have lived because he would have lived through that second right click and then he would have just gotten out. Damn. If you'd been over here, you could have silenced her. That's fine. I think that was pretty good. I don't really have any real issues with how you play that. Just minor nitpicky things that I probably wouldn't have done any better. This guy's gonna die though, because he went to ham. I also don't think he should be going Dagon 5. Very rarely is Dagon 5 the correct move. Even if you're playing something like Tinker, on Tinker you want like an Ags or an Aether. Or Ags Aether, generally. Good damage. Now that you have the mana regen, you can definitely just pump more damage into people, and it's fine. Especially since Arcane Bolt is now more efficient. It doesn't increase his mana cost at all, but it goes up with a lot in damage.
This is where you have to check your mana cost. Because you're going to get a lot of damage into that guy, but now you're totally fucked out of mana. You also, I don't know why you have the Iron Branch in your inventory, but you don't have an Infused Raindrop. You would add like 30% more mana regen to yourself if you had it uh, in your inventory. And if Storm dropped you, it might live because of the Raindrop. And you may say, yeah, but it's, a, it's at one charge, right? But I don't know. I, I really feel like the mana regen plus possibly saving your ass is way more important than having to spend 225 more gold just to finish your urn. Um, urn, I feel, is a pretty good item this game. Um, it's not amazing. Both teams want to fight. Basically, you get urn uh, for one of two reasons. One, you're fighting a lot and you perceive yourself getting a lot of urn charges. Or two, uh, you don't have other major heal on your team and you want to be... You want to be topping off your allies like after a fight so you can go push. Like say you take a fight at a tier 2 that is rough but everyone lives. That's when urn is great because you can get everyone to full health in like 20 seconds. Looks like uh, there's just a pretty big fight mid. These guys should not have been there alone. Near, uh, I think. But I'm also not sure you should be farming right now. I feel like you should be roaming around with uh, Slardar trying to kill shit. Then again, he doesn't have a blink. Mm -hmm. Once Slark has his Shadow Blade, you should absolutely join him in going to kill shit. I see a lot of problems this game with uh, how your allies are itemizing. Like, this Dazzle's items don't really make sense. Uh, Slardar should not be rushing arm late, he should be going blink. Because your team doesn't have great initiation otherwise. Alright, I like that you shrined. I don't think people shrine enough in this game. I think they're like, oh, that's for my team. I'm only going to use it with an ally, but it can be really good if you're just low on mana and need to fight immediately. I think you should try to coordinate your Mystic Flares with Necro, so that when he Reaper-Sice, you Mystic Flare, like, right after the stun goes through. It does damage so fast, it can probably secure the Reaper Scythe if they're uh, both failed and Arcane Cursed. Or Ancient Sealed, excuse me. Um, this is definitely the part of the game where playing support uh, support becomes awkward. Because during the early game, you're roaming around and killing shit, but now this is much more difficult to do. Um, you're not totally strong like a mid Skyrath, and you are generally weak. Fog yourself. Oh no. Yeah, she should die for this. And you also know she just warded. Yeah. Uh, let me rewind that and just look at it in slow motion. Okay. So you go here. I like that you put that stuff in your backpack. Maybe not the urn, because this only gives you plus two to all attributes, and it does give you one mana regen. Um, okay, let's look at player perspective for you. Okay, so you see you see her and you accidentally fog yourself. I don't know why you're not arcane cursing. Or, sorry, arcane bolt. Okay, let's rewind that again. So... It looks like you're using edge scroll for moving your camera, which is like when you touch the edge of the screen and that moves your camera. I personally don't like this. Um, it keeps it keeps your... It means that every time you want to move your camera, you have to move your mouse away from people who you'd want to click. Right here you have a camera positioning problem that's pretty egregious. Um, like you move shit back in your inventory, that's fine. You see her, you accidentally fog yourself. And you don't... Okay, it just came off cooldown, but like, I don't know. It's kind of questionable. You would have seen the Life Stealer coming much sooner. And if you had a TP scroll, uh, she did Frostbite you at the beginning of that, right? Yeah, she did. So after she used Frostbite, you literally just TP out if you have one. That's why you always carry TP. You would have lived. Okie dokie. 
now this life suitor is getting kind of fat. He has almost three major items plus phase boots, and your Slark has like two. It's a minor disadvantage. Okay. Where are you? You came bottom. This is suicide. Unless you get somebody to help you. Like, you're not playing mid Scarath, right? So let's let's just rewind this. Okay, so you die at the shrine, and you come back alive in ten seconds, and you say, "Oh, I need a TP bot to defend this." This guy may be low health, but he has an armlet, which means he can give himself basically five hundred HP instantly. And you may think, "Oh, he's got rage, but I can silence him." You're not wrong, but you also just don't do a whole lot of amp damage. Like, he stood in that for a while, but it just wasn't enough. This thing does 600 damage, and he took like half of that. It just wasn't sufficient. In technical terms, this is called chain feeding. You gotta realize when you're not playing mid Scarath, because if, if you were uh, like level 15, that guy was dead to rights. You just Atos silence and then ult him with a level 2 Mystic Flare, and that guy's fucking pwned. But support Scarath isn't like that. You have to coordinate with your team and you have to um, mostly get kills by virtue of silence and concussive shot and then pump in arcane bolts when you can. Um, especially with like Slardar and later on Necro. I think you should be coordinating heavily with your Necro right now. Although he's also going fucking Dagon Rush which is pretty terrible. Let's look at the last hits the nice. Oh no, it happened again. Who could have predicted this? Alright, well you got him. Um, but you've died three times to that life stealer now. It's it's part of why he's got such a high net worth. Yeah, that guy's like fucking immense. And you gotta realize when you just can't do anything versus certain people. Sometimes uh, in Dota you just kinda have to throw everything you got. Like say... If you're about to lose the game, you just gotta try no matter what. But in situations like this, there's nothing wrong with letting that guy whack your tier 2. Your team can come in and then you can help kill him with your team. But just letting him punch the building is not so bad as feeding him. Alright, great silence on that Storm Spirit. Personally, I don't really give a shit about any of these towers except for the tier 3s. Like, tier 1s are a little bit easier to defend. Because the only way you can really attack a tier 1 is here, or through here. And you have tons of TP space and defensible area. Same thing with the mid one. You can't really attack this except from this angle, and I guess if you're ganking you can go through here. But there's a lot... Tier 1s are basically about even in how easy they are to defend. Probably your offlane tier 1 is the easiest to defend actually, because you have so much space. Uh, and they have to come through this choke point. Tier 2s, if you look at them, they're very hard to defend. Your enemies can go through here and go through here. They can take this high ground and they can basically attack you from 270 degrees of angle. Basically, the only way they can't attack is through here, which is obviously where you're trying to defend from. If you look at this tower, how do you defend this? You walk up this choke point. They can do fucking anything they want to, to uh, position around your tier two. Same thing here. You've got this and kind of this, but they will often attack you through here. Um, so I, I never really try to defend tier 2s. If somebody's whacking it and they're like, oh, we gotta go defend the tier 2, it's almost never a good idea. That life stealer is hitting this alone, and he may have a deso, but he wasn't taking it terribly fast. You didn't need to be the first person there. It needed to be Slardar, because Cross of Haze makes him really not happy. Life stealer doesn't have a whole lot of armor, and he doesn't have a whole lot of armor items. He's building an AC, but your team can really shred him once you've got Corrosive Haze on him. You gotta you gotta have the Slardar go first. Maybe silence him from a distance, but like, you gotta have your team right there to make sure you don't die. Okay, now you're building an Athos. Uh, this is not bad. Uh, ordinarily, I think things like Hmm, if I'm not playing mid Scarath, do I really need to be solo killing people with an Atos? But you're up against a Storm Spirit and a Weaver. Yeah, 
Yeah, you just get popped. There's nothing wrong with positioning here. You have really long range spells. Not as long as like a Jakiro or uh, an Earthshaker, but there's nothing wrong with positioning back here. And since you have such high move, movement speed and a Windlace, and you're going to probably get a Talents, maybe, you can position pretty quickly and silence people from a pretty reasonable distance. It won't show it while paused, but like, that's pretty good, I feel. I think the correct item to get in this situation is probably Ghost Scepter and then Atos. Because there are three people on the enemy team who really want to be right clicking you, and Ghost Scepter stops all of them from doing this. Atos doesn't actually stop people from hitting, it just stops them from moving or using movement abilities. Uh, but if, if Lifestealer goes on, you just pop a Ghost Scepter and wait for your team to come in because they've been pretty good with their response times, you've just been dying so fast that they can't save you. Uh, but it'll, but Ghost Scepter would buy you 4 seconds, and it's pretty cheap too. Um, and if you're still having trouble locking down the storm, that's when you get the, uh, the Atos. Like Weaver, uh, Storm Spirit, they all want to right click you. Storm Spirit wants to use over, Overcharge to do it, but it's still the same thing. Uh, if Storm Spirit can't attack people, it's a problem for him. Like, it's why it's so fucking hard to kill Enchantress if you're playing Storm Spirit. Because even though you do magic damage, you do it through right-clicking. And her attack slow is fucking miserable to play against. So I think Ghost Scepter is definitely the correct decision here. I like that you're putting your Bracers in your inventory, but you definitely need to be carrying a TP. This whole game you've barely been carrying TPs in your inventory, and you might be able to save people. It's just good habits to build. Alright, let's keep speeding on through. All right, another 2k mistake. Their ward was here. You just walked up and placed the ward. This is something that's very easy to see. Like, oh look, the enemy support just walked up, placed the something on the cliff, and then walked away. I wonder what it is. And then they, it's the easiest D ward of my life. Like I see people do that so much. Look, Crystal Man's TPing in with sentries to kill that ward. Um. You need to do one of two things. Ward after you've de-ward, but not in the same spot. Or ward where you know that they haven't warded. Or ward when you're smoked. But doing this shit where you just think, oh, let's place a ward. It's going to get you killed. It's going to get your ward killed. It's just bad. Yep. And now there's going to be a fight here. And you might kill some people, yeah. But after the fight, Crystal Man's gonna come back and kill the ward. Yeah, so that, w that was a case of Crystal Man sees you ward, and then she says, I'm gonna go de ward that without thinking of whether she can do it safely. So you can also see the enemy's mistakes in that way. You need to be back here in case Storm dives you, or Weaver dives you. Well, I guess. Hmm. If Lifestealer were alive, you'd be afraid of him popping out from here and then just killing you. So you just need to be careful. That's what happened to you last time. You also don't need to be hitting the tower. You hit for 100 damage very slowly. Your Slark needs to be hitting towers, not you. You need to be like back here waiting for somebody to go in. Very frequently I'll see supports doing this where it's like, you hit for 40 damage, Crystal Maiden. Why are you hitting the tower? It's because they don't know what else they should be doing. You should be hiding in the trees, waiting for something to happen and then popping out of the trees, but right now you're exposing yourself and you're grouping up with your team. If they had like a an Earth Shaker, it's the easiest Echo Slam of his life. Another case of just bad habits. I like that you max uh, Ancient Seal before a uh, concussive shot. Helps you control the storm. Yeah, and you're saying get back because Life Sealer's missing? Good call. Alright, Silence the Storm, great. So, a couple things. You have, uh, 
actually. So you have a Necker on your team, and you ulted somebody who's low health. Uh, now, ideally, you would be able to communicate with the Necro and say things like, okay, do you want to Reaper Scythe this guy? But even pros know that you can't communicate shit like that in the heat of a battle. So you need to infer that Necro, when he has Reaper Scythe off cooldown, is going to use it on that target with less than like a quarter of his HP. And then you need to use your ult to try and pump damage into somebody like this Weaver after silencing him and ideally rooting him with uh, Atos or just slowing him. So, um, inferring things like this can help um, keep you from wasting spells on multiple on on the same target. Great. Yeah. What's that? What's that Dagon doing for you? That guy was dead anyway. I just, I don't know. So, if you want to know why you lost this game. Probably if Necro had gone something useful, you would have won. Because he's like almost even with uh, the Slark and pretty close to the night or to the, the life stealer. Slark's going decent items. He might not need the Silver Edge, because there aren't a huge number of passives to break on the enemy team except Beast. But I don't know, I just feel like you've got ten K network of a Dagon five. And it's just not very good. I'd rather have a Greaves any day, it helps you push. Your team has uh, problems killing buildings. Like, you've won two major fights in a row, and Slark is basically all you have to deal damage to buildings. If you had a different lineup, you could have taken Rax. Like, in every single lineup, you need somebody who can hit buildings. In their lineup, it's Lifestealer and Weaver. But if you have no way to push, your lead is false. Alright, this guy should die. Alright, I would have preferred if uh, Necro had gone on that guy and Slark had followed up. Maybe Poison Touch, maybe you can cut some shot a bit sooner. But it's not a huge waste because this thing is already off cooldown by the time they're up. They all come up at the same time. You need to leave now. But nope, Slark's gonna go back and hit buildings. Good call pinging him, but you just need to leave. Just leave. If you try to stay with him, you're gonna die as well. Yep. And now you're out of mana. This is why you don't try to take two consecutive fights without getting all your mana back when you're playing somebody like Skyra. Or Storm Spirit, for instance. Storm didn't go Bloodstone, which I find interesting. Although he's about to build it. He needed to build it sooner or not at all. Yeah. Yeah, so if your team does that shit, don't even try. You could have died there if they had played better. It's like... I know that it's the correct decision to leave right now. Then just leave. Don't. Unless you're playing somebody with a crazy save like Dazzle, you need to leave. Um, but, like, what what does Skyrath benefit from hanging out near teammates who you know are about to die, who are refusing to leave? Not much. You can maybe throw a silence, maybe a concussive shot, but you'll likely die for it because you have 7 armor. Or I guess you only have 2 armor. 4. You got some of it from the tower. Okay, guys. Necro's entire net worth is Dagon. Yeah, I just wish this Necro had, like, a Greaves, maybe even a Pipe. Necro, Necro carries by being alive. And when you buy Dagon, it's just like, Hur -hur, I can delete somebody, and then your whole team just gets fucked. Alright, this is risky. Again, look at how hard this is to defend. Uh, they just have so many ways to, like, get behind you. And they have a ward here, so they know you're not here. They could have people, like, walk up and just sneak around. This is just not worth defending, I feel. You should just be split-pushing, split-farming. I feel like Necro and Slark, if Slark weren't dead, he should just be farming camps while they take this tower. It's just not that important, you know? Like, tier 1s are semi-important because they're a very distant way to TP to things, but not so much tier 2s. Yeah, look. And you guys can do, like, nothing about this. Alright. Uh... Yeah, she has a Glimmer.
good. I like that you were right clicking. You need to silence that guy. Oh, good earn. Um, you ended up getting the Storm Spirit, but if that had gone differently, I would have been okay with you dying to the Weaver if it meant silencing the Storm, because he might have, um, he might not have uh, gotten so much damage into your team. But I think that went okay. You shrined up. Now you're coming back. I think this is correct. Oh damn! That guy just got fucked. That's a good deletion. And your Atos is on the courier. Okay. Um, one other thing about Ghost Scepter on Skyrath is that um, late game, Ethereal Blade is pretty fucking good on you. Um, it adds some small amount of armor, but it also just makes you hit way faster. Which can be good, because you will have already bought a lot of int items, hopefully. Um, and it lets you stop either the Weep, uh, Weaver, the Storm, or the Lifestealer from attacking. It's pretty useful. But she has a Glimmer, though. Yeah, and then as soon as you dust, she just gets popped. Alright, good. I suppose you're mostly interested in why you lost the game after you you had such an advantage. You need to leave. That guy was hitting a creep for some reason. If the enemy team is alive and you guys don't have full mana or all of your shit off cooldown, as soon as you take the racks, you just need to get the fuck out. This Slardar needs a blink so bad. Yeah. I like that you just left. And your team's probably pinging you saying, Oh, why'd Scarath leave? Well, Mr. Slark, why were you farming creeps? I don't know. It's interesting watching these games because so many people are just playing like crap. Find out the smokes. I'm guessing you're gonna try and take Roshan or go for a gank or something. Whenever you go for a smoke gank, you need to have vision of your enemies. Uh, oftentimes, I see low MR players just buy smoke out of desperation because they think, "Oh shit, we need to, you know, we need to, um, we need to get back into this game. We need to kill somebody." But then they don't have any vision anywhere on the map, and their smoke gank just whiffs. Yeah. Damn, you're gonna die for that though. So, if you had had a better early game and had more money from killing uh, the Weaver top and had been pulling creeps, you might have had a Ghost Scepter by now, which meant you would have lived in that situation. Or if you hadn't died to the life steal it like five times. In Dota you want to be proactive. Like when you're playing against a Riki, you don't buy dust after he's gotten away five times. You buy it when you see that the enemy team picked a Riki and you hopefully do it at like level two. So uh, avoiding deaths to the life stealer is something that you want to be doing like as soon as you realize that he can kill you. Before he does it, but like as soon as you evaluate him and say, even though I have zero deaths, if I walk up to that guy, he's going to pop me. Because then you know, the next time he tries to kill you, it's going to be even easier for him, because he'll have like another level and a couple hundred bucks more. Now it's going to be really tough to kill this guy. Dazzle's going to break his Lincolns. Why does he have a... Okay, whatever. Always check enemy items. Always, always, always. Dazzle could have broken his thing with four staff, and then it dosed him. The real question is, why is Dazzle solo killing their shrine? Oh well. And you're finally carrying TPs, that's good.
This is something else I see. Don't deward shit unless you know that they have a ward there. A lot of a lot of uh, low MMR supports will say things like, "Oh, I need to deward because this is my job," and all they will do is they will throw wards wherever. Uh, they will they will try to deward shit without knowing that a ward is there, and this very commonly results in whiffed sentries. Uh, it's better to just watch how people behave and infer whether they have vision of you, and then try to use that information to guess where the ward is. Even if you whiff, you'll probably get it on the second ward, because there are not many places in the, on the map where there are like three or four wards that can overview the same spot. So for instance, like if it's nighttime, and I'm about to invade jungle, and I have high ground vision here, and these guys uh, fall back immediately, I know they have a ward either here or here. And if I place a sentry here, I can get them. Uh, the, o the only other place they, they can put it is like here. That's that's how you need to be do warding. You don't need to be do warding like, oh, I'm going to place sentries on the eyes and hope I catch a ward. You don't, don't hope, just infer, right? All right. Looks like you did a lot of damage. Good stuff. Now you're dead, unfortunately. Let's rewind this and look what the fuck went so wrong. That was a disaster. Okay. Good lord. Okay. So, Slaughter is not here. He does not have Blink. He wants Blink. He should have been communicating to your team that, oh, let's wait until I have a blink before we're fighting. Uh, you place this random ass sentry. You don't have vision of them. Your vision is here. You don't know where they are. This is really dangerous. You need to be staying by your core so he can protect you. Storm jumps in. At this point, you should say, I'm getting the fuck out. Because Slardar is here and nowhere the fuck near. And you really need Corrosive Haze to kill the Lifestealer. Because they have a life stealer storm spirit, you know he's probably going to be spending most of the game bombing in the in the storm spirit. So you can infer that this is going to be a life stealer too, as he hops out in like a second, right? At this point, you should be running the fuck away. Maybe all you do is silence the storm and then kill him, right? But then immediately leave. At this point, turn around. But you got stunned. Now everyone dies. Yep. And now you lose. Yeah. Their whole team is pretty fat right now. And your life stealer, or uh, sorry, your your Necrolite has like thirteen thousand dollars and like eight thousand of it is just a Dagon five against a hero that has magic immunity. It's just kind of dumb. Hello, Ghost. Yeah, you needed to have more TP scrolls. You needed to not chain feed to the life stealer. Be more proactive about um, things like, oh, I know that guy's strong, and I know he has an arm light, so I'm not going to be able to kill him because I'm not playing mid Scarath. Um, your burstiness is best when it's combined with other people. To be honest, I didn't like your lineup. Uh, like, Poison Touch is just... Early game, it's not very good. Because most of the time you keep it at level 1 or 2 uh, for most of the early game. 33% slow for 3 seconds is generally not going to be enough to uh, really help you get a Mystic Flare. You need more damage because generally most of the Mystic Flare isn't going to land. You're going to get like 500, 400 damage out of this and you need more damage. So is it going to come from Arcane Bolt or is it going to come from Necro? You need to be communicating with the Necro about that shit. Um, in terms of top, Weaver was here. You could have been pulling uh, while somebody else harassed the Weaver. Weaver is really weird to play against because at level 1 he's shit and at level 2 he's great because he gets Geminated Attack at level 2. Uh, and that makes it very hard to trade against him. Um, other than that, I think you need to conserve mana until level 3 once you get your Arcane Bolt back. Um, and once you get an upgrade on our Cable and the cooldown is reduced, it makes kills much more likely. Maybe even wait till 5. I would be much more okay with you waiting until like level 3 to try and kill the Storm Spirit. 
and then maybe by level four you got your arcane seal and then you can definitely kill him with reaper sight which you did but i think you could have done more of it maybe fucked him over harder um yeah and then just not chain feeding the lifestealer could have changed things as well cool